have a good day. Today, I'm going to share with all of you how to analyze continuous beam unequal span. Analyzing to determine the shear force and also bending moment. Because some of us confuse how to analyze the unequal span, span continuous beam. Here is the structure layout plan of the building that we are going to design. So given here a few grid line A, B, C, D, 1, 2, 3, 4 with a different size of the slab. And we know that this beam is considered as unequal span because the minimum span here and then the maximum span here, here the difference is more than 15%. So for example, if the minimum and also maximum difference of its length is less than 15%, we can consider the beam as a equal span. So all dimension here is given in millimeter. Given here, in my case here, I'm going to analyze beam C15. This is beam C15. So this is the beam. Okay. So this is the data given in order for us to analyze the beam. So the first step is okay, we have to do the preliminary sizing of the structural element, which is slab and also beam. Because as a structural engineer, the size of the element is not provided. So from the architecture plan that we receive, we have to prepare the structural layout plan. So from that, we have to determine uh, by calculating the preliminary sizing to determine the slab thickness, the size of the beam, the size of the slab, and so on. Okay, so here are the methods that I normally use in order for me to determine the size of the element. The first one is preliminary size of the slab. So normally, I will calculate the preliminary sizes, sizing of the element based on two conditions. The first one is due to the fire resistance, and then the second one, is based on the span over depth ratio, then we will compare the value which one is the highest one. Okay. On the preliminary sizing of the slab, so due to the fire resistance, we may refer to table 5.8. Then we refer to that table given here the fire resistance on the early specification that we have determined is about 1.5 hours fire resistance. Therefore, we refer to table 5.8. They will show the slab thickness HF minimum is 100 millimeter. Next, we have to calculate due to the span over depth ratio by referring to table 7.4 and what we have done before. Okay, so for this case, I do calculate one, two, three different size here because we have a different condition of the slab. Either it is a one way or two way, either it is end span or mid span. I choose randomly. Okay, so based on my uh, judgment. Okay, in my case here, okay, for one way mid span, I choose CD34, L over D based on table 7.44N, which is the ratio is 30. Then I get the D here is 90 millimeter. And two way end span CD12, the span over there based on table 7.4N as our reference is 26. Therefore, our D here is 103 millimeter. For two-way end span, I assuming extra 20% of the span over depth ratio. That's why the L over D given in the table 7.4N is 30. When we have an extra 20, which is 36. Then the LX here is 4250, 4 bc 23 Then divided by 36, we get 118. So based on all those four values that we have calculated, so we have to choose the highest one. The highest one is 118 millimeter. Then I will provide much more higher than 118 millimeter, which is 125 millimeter. That is a normal dimension that we use for the slide. 100, 110, 125, 150, 175, or the maximum one is 200 millimeter. So it depends on the calculation that you get. Second one, you have to do calculation for the preliminary sizing of your beam. Same as what we have done for the slab. The first one is due to the fire resistance. In my case here, for the fire resistance, 
uh, we refer to table 5.6 for continuous beam. Uh, we refer here, our B minimum is 150 millimeter. Okay, so for R90. Okay, so due to the span over depth ratio, I will calculate two. One for the end span and another one at the mid span. So I got here 115 millimeter and 192 millimeter. Okay. So on overall depth, normally this is how because uh, when we would like to calculate H is equal to D plus C nominal plus diameter link plus diameter bar over 2. So I just assume early of the C nominal which is 35 millimeter. You can assume more 40 or 45. It's up to you guys. Okay, as long as the value is valid and relevant uh, as a C nominal. Okay, so in my case here, I got 400 millimeter. Okay, 241 millimeter. So I assume the bigger size normally, uh, which is much more higher because the B minimum is 150. Normally, is at least twice or more for the H. So that's why I assume 400 millimeter. So I recheck my BW, which is at least 0 0.4 H equal to 160 millimeter. So that's why my beam size that I assume or I calculate here as a preliminary size is 175 millimeter times 400 millimeter. What is the next process? We have to do an action analysis. In order for us to do an action analysis, there is a few process that we have to do. The first one, we have to analyze the slab condition, either it is a one-way or two-way slab. In my case here, I'm going to design beam C or analyze beam C 1 to 5. We have to analyze all those slabs that is connected to this beam. Either it is one way or two way by calculating Ly over Lx. If it is a less than two, which means it is a two way slab. If it is more than two, it means one way slab. So here is the case. Okay. So I have one, two, three, four, five, six, five. Six, seven, two-way slab and one, one-way slab. Okay, so I assume this is as a slab one, slab two, slab three, slab four, slab five, slab six, slab seven and eight. Okay, so we can name it as our own uh, symbol. Okay, so it's up to you. Then we have to analyze the load on the beam. The first one, we have to calculate the load on the slab. Load on all the slab in this case, I consider same okay, based on the my own judgment. Okay, so for example, if you have a different function of the slab, you may have a different load condition. So for example, if it is a toilet and it is a balcony, sometimes the variable here will be different. So you have to really check your architecture plan and the floor usage of that area is what. Okay, so you have to be confident and have to check it carefully. So, I calculate here permanent of the slab self weight is 25 times 0 0.125, and then the total permanent is 3.625 kilonewton per meter square. Variable action is 2.5 kilonewton per meter square. Just leave it there because we are going to transfer load from slab to the beam. So, I will show the process how I transfer the load from slab to the beam. Second one, we have to calculate the load on the beam. The load on the beam self weight, uh, first we have to calculate the beam self weight is 25 times 0 0.175 times 0 0.4 equal to 1.75 kilonewton per meter. Then I have to calculate the brick wall. So the brick wall is sitting on the beam, so that's why it's considered as a load on the beam. So the value is 7.80 kilonewton per meter. Then the total permanent is GK. 9.55 kilonewton per meter. There is no variable action on the beam because the variable action is acting normally on the slab. Then we have to draw this diagram in order for us to know what are the elements that will contribute the load on the beam. Okay, in my case here, so I have three elements. Okay, the first one here is load on the beam. Second one here is load on the slab for one side okay slab one slab two slab three slab four and then this is another uh, load that is acting from the slab slab five slab six slab seven slab eight 
So based on this condition, if you refer this figure, so I have three shape of the slab load. The first one is triangular. Second one is trapezoidal. The third one is uh, rectangular. So it's based on the slab condition. Either it is one way or two way slab. So I hope that you understand how to draw this based on the figure that I do already shows to you here. Okay. So if you have any inquiry, you may ask in the comment. Okay. So I'm using this method or this formula in order for me to transfer load from slab to the beam. So you may use another method, which is a coefficient method that I will not show. So you may have your own reference uh, in order for you to transfer load by using that method. So if you would like to use this method, so for one way slab, so this slab or the load is only transfer at ly okay there is no slab no load transfer at lx so that's why the w is equal to nlx over 2 kilonewton meter so for two way slab we have two load type which is triangular and also trapezoidal here is the formula w is equal to nlx over 3 and for trapezoidal is w equal to nlx over 6 times 3 minus lx over ly power of 2 kilonewton. So here, I do already simplify, okay, this table in order for me to calculate the total factors of load for the beam that I'm going to analyze. Okay, so I do separate this permanent action and also variable action for each span. So in my case here, I have four span span 1, 2, 2, 3, 3, 4, and 4, 5. Okay, here are the load, permanent action, and also variable action. So here are the elements that will contribute load on top of the beam, 1, 2, 2, 3, 3, 4, and 4, 5. So the element is load from the beam, load from the slab 1, slab 2, slab 3, slab 4. This one is slab 5. 6, 7, 8. Sorry, this is typo. Okay. Okay. So, for the span 1, 2. Okay. 1, 2. The beam load is 9.55 kilonewton. As what we calculate here, I'll show you again. Okay. And then, the load that we transfer, okay, for the permanent action, here is triangular load. So that's why I'm using this formula, NLX over 3. So here I do calculate the N here is only the permanent action. The permanent action of the slab is 3.625 here. Okay, 3.625, you time with it. LX. So in our case here, our LX is referred to this figure, so which is 3 meter here. Okay, 3 meter. So 3.625 times 3 divided by 3, I'll get this answer. And then we calculate for the variabilization. So the variabilization is 2.5 kilonewton per meter squared times with the LX 3 divided by 3, you will get 2.5. Okay, so we have to continue all the process okay, for each of this pen. Okay, so this one, okay, is slab 5. Okay? So it's actually slab 5. So our load is same 3.625, but our LX is already different. So this is your slab 5. Our LX here is 2.7 meter. Okay, so you have to calculate and its shape is trapezoidal, okay? So you have to use this formula to calculate this load, okay? So N is equal to 3.625 times with 2.7 divided by 6 times with 3 minus LX is 2.7, LY is 3 meter, okay? Power of 2, then you will get the answer here. And then you replace with the 
variable action here. And then you will get the answer. So after you calculate all this action, okay, permanent action, variable action, you total up. So this is the total load for the permanent action and also variable action on top of this beam one, two. And then we have to factorize by using the formula 1.35 GK plus 1.5 QK. So 1.35 GK times 16.747 plus 1.5 times 4.964 is equal to 30.05. You continue for all four span. Then you have this free body diagram for the load that is acting on top of the slab, on top of the beam, sorry. So we will have a different, okay, a different action or uniformly distributed load acting on top of each beam span. One, two, two, three, three, four, and four, five. Okay, here is the process in order for you to analyze this beam. You have to remember when it is equal span, the method that we can use in order for us to analyze the shear force and also bending moment is moment distribution method as what we have learned in structural analysis. Okay, so how we going to do this? So as usual, when we would like to do a moment distribution method, there is a three step that we have to do. The first one is to calculate the distribution factor. The second one, fix and moment. And then the third one is the moment distribution method. Okay. So in my case here, okay, I do already calculate my distribution factor. So by using Excel. So for example here, okay, we have file four members. Members one, two, three, four members. Support we have five. One, two, three, four, five. Okay. My... Uh, case here, so normally we will have a pin support at the end, 1 and 5, because we do not want to have a moment at the end of the uh, at the end of the beam, okay, because we would like to assume or to calculate to, to make sure that the moment is equal to 0, okay, the length is 3, 5, 5.75 and 2.5, okay, so this is the K is equal to EI over L, right? So for the pin is 3 EI over L, for fix is 4 EI over L and so on. So we calculate the distribution factor here. So from that distribution factor, we calculate the fix and moment for each members, okay? M12, M21, M23 and so on. Okay, so by using this formula lah, okay? So uh, for, because of this support here is a pin, Okay, another is a fix. The formula for fix and moment here is WL squared over 8. The other one is WL squared over 12. And then here will be 0. So as I said that, the moment at that side will be a 0. Okay, and then we do the moment distribution method. So this moment distribution method, in my case here, I'm using Excel for me to uh, easily to calculate okay the value okay so here is the process how we going to do the moment distribution method so from that this moment distribution method we can get the end moment here as i said at support one and five should be zero and then we have a balance moment here so for at it uh join or it support okay support two three and four okay so from that we have to analyze the shear force and also bending moment. So in order for us to do a shear force and bending moment analysis, so the first one, we have to calculate the reaction. So we have to calculate the reaction for each of the span. Okay, here is the method by using equilibrium equation as usual and also moment equation. So for example, I just explained one example here. So we redraw, okay, the free body diagram here. So for example, for the span one, two, so I have a load 30.05 kN meter, and then the span is 3 meter. So I will have V12, and then here is a V21. I have a moment 48.84 here from here. Okay. Here the moment is equal to zero. So summation moment at one is equal to negative. Okay, because it is anti-clockwise. Okay. Time three 
plus 30.05 times 3 times 1.5 plus 48.84. Okay? So, we will get the value is equal to 60.36. Okay? So, we have to calculate for the all span. Okay? So, we will get the reaction for each of the join here. So, V12, V21 and so on. Okay, so I do already calculate for the all span and then here is the total reaction for the uh, support. So for support 1Y is equal to 28.88 kN. For support 2 is 135.13 kN. Support 3 is 217.65 kN. Support 4 is 174.88 kN. And support 5 is 3.69 kN. So, we have to draw this diagram. Here is the action or uniformly distributed load. Here is the reaction. Here is the moment, okay, at the joint, okay, which is the end moment. And then we draw the shear force diagram, okay. So, in order for you to determine the shear force diagram, it's really easy, okay. So, we know that here is 29.88, okay. So, how do I get this 60.36? So, it's from your reaction that you calculate here, so which is here, 60.36, which is V21. And then V12 is 29.88. And then we continue, okay? So V23 is 74.77 here. And then V32 is 98.93 here. Okay? So, you continue until you get this figure. Okay. Next, in order for you to draw bending moment diagram, here is the process. So, in my case here, I'm going to use area method in order for me to determine the maximum moment of the beam. Okay. So, you have to know because this is unequal size of triangular so we should know this x distance in order for us to know this area okay so you have to calculate by using the uh what we by by using trigonometry methods okay so i won't explain it so i just give you an example one lah. okay so in my case here x1 is 0 0.99 meter how do i get it okay so I assume this is a big triangular, okay? So, 29.88 plus 60.36. So, you will get the total uh, of it. This triangular is equal to 19.24. So, 19.24, okay, kilonewton is equal to this length, 3 meter. So, if 20.88 is equal to how many meters? So, that's why I get X. So, the equation will be 90.24 over 3 meter equal to 29.88 over X. Then, we will get X equal to 0 0.99 meter. So, you continue for all span. So, this is how I determine the bending moment. So, we know that this bending moment, okay, is at the support, which is equal to the end moment based on our uh, bending moment diagram or moment distribution method that we have done before. So, the question here, how are we going to determine this maximum moment here? So, we know that at sub M support here, zero. So, we can use the area method in order for us to determine this maximum moment. Here is the example. Okay. How do I get this 14.79? So, moment at one here is zero kilonewton meter. So, maximum moment between 1 to 2 is equal to 0 plus y plus here because the shear force area here, okay, at the top here is positive. So, that's why I plus with this area. Area is 0 0.5, okay, time with x1, 0 0.99, time with 29.88, okay. So, you see the answer here, 14.79 kilonewton meter. So, I get the answer for the first one and then here is your 
and moment at the support to 48.84 you do the same process because okay here is a positive area so 45 might plus okay this is a negative eh? this is negative moment negative 45.84 because in bending moment diagram at the bottom i assume as a positive at the top as a negative so negative 48.84 plus with 0 0.5 Time with 74.77 times 2.15. So here 74.77, here is 2.15, which is x2 distance. So I'll get the answer 34.53 kilonewton. Then you will continue and you have to make sure that at the end, okay, you will get the answer is equal to zero. Okay, so the process is same. Okay, so means if you uh, calculate here for example okay so for example negative 45.84 you plus with this area you will get the answer 20 34.53 then after you plus with this answer okay because uh, you minus with this answer you will get back negative 106.23 and then you continue you plus with this area okay you will get this answer and then you minus with this area you will get this answer you plus with this area you will get this answer and then you minus with this area you will get approximately equal to zero i hope that by this sharing session you really understand how to analyze unequal span continuous beam so that's it for my sharing session today thank you assalamualaikum